Hi everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It depends on what Get right to it. Hello, hi, can you see me? Can you hear me? Please let me know in the comments. This is Brenda Unu reaching you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I just want one person to tell me they can see me and hear me and I will go right ahead. It is six o'clock and it's time for our class. So please tell everyone, share the live link with everyone that you know and let's get into the conversation. Okay. I just want to be sure you can see me and hear me. Oh, great, excellent. So you can see me and hear me. Thank you, Tina. So now that I know that you can see me and hear me, um, I reintroduce myself again. My name is Brenda Unu. I'm reaching you live from Lagos, Nigeria, and on the platform of the Women's Growth Academy. And today we shall be talking about much ado about purpose when i wrote that topic i was i was smiling to myself because i remembered a topic um the title of a book from shakespeare much ado about nothing and you know all those days we used to cram those things and it was just it just sounded like fun and so i said but really why i put it that way was that so many people are struggling and you know under, under the burden of oh i can't find my purpose oh i don't know my purpose and they're almost stuck not doing anything so today i want to deliver you from that road i want to let you know that you are probably putting too much energy in search of the ever elusive purpose and you should rather concentrate on what you're doing today and in the doing it will get clearer if you take nothing else from this conversation today learn this that your purpose is in the doing and as you do, it gets clearer. So, first of all, what is purpose? Purpose is, is okay, so purpose is the, the use of a thing. Like the main, the main, the main, right? If you wanted to know, if you had a knife, right, and a spoon, they're both cutleries, but they have different purposes. A spoon can be used to eat rice, it can be used to drink soup. A knife cannot be used for any of those. A knife, can be used to cut bread, 
cut meat and all of those you can even possibly use the knife to eat if you find that you are you're stuck and you don't have any traffic any cutlery but that is not its main purpose it's not to be used to scoop rice into your mouth that would be a fork that would be a spoon so everything has its own purpose hi ayo and when you don't know the purpose of a thing how do they put it abuse is inevitable so today we're going to be talking about purpose and we're going to be saying hi tonya we're going to be asking what is purpose right purpose is the use of a thing simply put but when we talk about purpose for somebody's life hi what then is it it's it's the intention and direction in your life that establishes and derives meaning right so it's it's intention and direction in your life that establishes meaning so many people struggle they say every day that, oh i don't have purpose i can't find my purpose oh i don't know what i'm doing in life i'm searching for my purpose i mean <laughs> i've been to many you know self-development courses many motivational courses and, and speeches and all of that and when you ask people to raise up their hand the first thing they say is how can i find my purpose man and i'm thinking okay okay purpose is important yes but first of all when we want to find the purpose of a thing we said this in the last class in the last live where do you search you go and search from the maker right so when you want to find purpose for yourself who do you ask your maker who's your maker god right so the first thing is to ask yourself okay i want to know why i was made who made me so my catechism as a little girl i remember very clearly how we used to recite it who made you god made me why did God make me? God made me to know him, to love him, to serve him, and to be happy with him in this world and the next. Now that was interesting because, you know, I used to say that we used to just recite it without even knowing what it meant. But today I sat down and took a closer look at it. God made me to know him. How do we know God? Like how do we claim to love somebody that we don't know? So knowing God is critical, it's important. We've been talking about how to know God, you know, in reading his word because you know how we know that god's word is jesus the word of god is jesus made flesh right the word jesus is the word of god made flesh so in knowing god we read the word you know we look through the life of jesus and we can know the father so god made me to know him to love him to serve him to be happy with him in this world and the next how do we love god the Bible says that you cannot claim to love God who you do not see. Why you do not love your neighbor who you see? Kengay. Mm -hmm. So, we want to love God, but we need to love our neighbor who are made in the image and likeness of God. That is the first step to loving God. So, God made us to know him, to love him, to serve him. How do we serve God? We serve God in our neighbor. We serve God in our neighbor because Jesus said to his disciples, you know, when he was giving the story about when at the end of time, God will come and he will say, why, when he will say, oh, you get away from me, you know, and go to the area where you're going to gnash your teeth. And be like, what happened? Say, because when I was sick, you did not help, you didn't, you didn't help me. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. And when I was hungry, you did not feed me. And they will say, when, when were you naked? When did I see you naked and did not clothe you? Like, hello, how will I see Jesus naked and not clothed? It's not possible. How will I see Jesus hungry and not giving my last food? It's not possible. But Jesus said something very critical. As long as you do not do it to any of the list of these brethren, you do not do it to me. So back to my catechism. Why did God make you? God made me to know him, to love him, to serve him. How do we serve God? Is in this people that he has created we need to serve we cannot go and serve God you can't see good now she we agree that wanna be we can't see God so how do we serve God we serve God in serving our neighbors and then what next to be happy with him in this world and the next so many people you know how many people are looking like they're looking for heaven heaven is the goal heaven is the goal they don't want to be happy on this earth they're just looking for heaven because of that they are making their life so difficult they want to fast every day they want to carry their face tie their hair do everything just because they want to make heaven their goal is to make heaven and god has said is to be happy with him in this world and the next heaven is here heaven is in you heaven is where the abode of god and where is god god is in you 
So what are we looking for up and down? If you cannot be happy here, you cannot be happy. There's no heaven that you're going to be happy, you know. So just forget all those ones that you're doing. Yes, you have to start to be happy with him here in this world and the next. Now, these are the reasons I was taught as a child as why God made me. Exactly. They want to escape rather than engage. You need to engage on this earth. Because even though Jesus said to us that we are, we are in this world but not of the world, he put us in the world on purpose. I was talking to my daughter the other day. She said to me, oh, mommy, how can you be the one to choose a school for, you know, she was talking about her, her brother who is writing common entrance. And he says that um, he wanted to go to a particular school. And we had already agreed on the school he was going. So all of a sudden, his school, his primary school where he attends, took them on this excursion to their secondary school, made it look all nice and happy. And the boy wanted to go there. And he came and said he wants to go there. And his sister was on his side. And I was like, where did this come from? We've had this conversation before about where you're going. And we started talking about the pros and cons. And she was like, why wouldn't you let him go to where he wants to go? And I said, hey, excuse me? There is a reason why God didn't just drop children on the earth. He dropped them in families. He dropped them under parents. There is a reason. You know how the Bible says foolishness resides in the heart of a child? I've never understood that, that, that verse, but there was a reason why he dropped them in families. I said, so there's a reason why I need to take, con I need to be the one taking decisions for you at your age. There is a reason. In the same way, there is a reason why God created you, right? So, why why are we having these conversations about purpose? Why is it such a such a huge conversation? I find that a lot of people find it difficult to find their purpose. I mean, let's just take a quick poll here. If there's anybody on this group that knows their purpose, if you're on the call right now, you know your purpose. Just say yes, say no. I I, I put up a poll earlier, but I didn't put the post early, early enough, so I'm not sure I got enough answers. But just take a quick poll. Yes, no, yes, no. We don't we don't need you to elaborate. Do you think you found your purpose? Hey, do you think Psalm 57 verse 2 it says, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. God God didn't just mass create us. Like, I mean, anytime I think about God, I always like, man, gosh, I can't wait to see him. I have questions. Like, I have questions for days. We're 7 billion in the world, and we're not mass produced. Each of us have a different DNA from the next person. Each person has a different fingerprint from the next person. Each of us is carefully and fearfully made. And he says he has numbered the hairs on your head. Like... It's not mass production. It's not, he just dropped all of you on earth. So each person, as you were being created, he knew the thing you were going to do on earth. He knew the purpose. I mean, there's something I saw was very funny. In the book of Proverbs, verse 16, it says, God made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. I know that your people have this proverb that say, um, even a useless person has a use. <laughs> and I think it's something about being the example of uselessness. You know, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're a person in the, in the, uh, on the call, please just type what it's supposed to be. Even the useless person has use, you know, even if it is to, to be made as an example of a useless person. Do you understand? So when you're talking about useless people, you're like, eh, hey, useless like Boda Sikirat, eh, hey, or, you know, that kind of thing. There's always a use for everybody. Even the troublesome person in the house is useful for the day when trouble comes to the house. Somebody can fight for the house. Do you understand? So everybody has a purpose. Everybody, no matter how you think you are, um, you know, you're just... They're just there. No, nobody's just there. Everybody was created for a purpose. Even the Bible says every God made everything for his purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. So I want to just tell you today that you have a purpose. That's number one. Just write it down. I have a purpose. Type it in the chat and tell yourself, I have a purpose. Hi, Susan, you're welcome. Say, I have a purpose, right? Just write it down and tell yourself, hi, my name. Hi, Brenda. I have a purpose on earth. Now, I gave the scripture last week and it came useful again. You are Yoruba, we don't have it. Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, Ephesians 2.10, I gave this um, yesterday, last week and it says, we are God's masterpiece. Another version, another um, translation says we are God's handiwork, right? 
created in Christ Jesus to do the good works which he had prepared in advance for us to do. Still speaking about it. Thank you, Oye. Still speaking about it. God had prepared something in advance for you to do. He didn't just drop you on earth, right? The same way he didn't just drop the children to just be running around. He dropped them into families. Everybody was dropped on earth with an assignment, with a purpose, with something to do. However, if we agree, all of us agree, that we are all in for a purpose. Why is it not hard? Why is it that God did not just send you with your name plate on your head? Brenda, to free the captives, <laughs> you know? And I'll tell you a simple reason why it may be hard. Welcome, thank you. Great, great, great. You have a purpose, all of us have a purpose. Why is it hard to find our purpose? You know our guy, Brother Paul. <laughs> Those of us in WGA, we're reading the book of Titus right now. We've been reading the episodes of Paul and we've been making jokes and saying, you know, anytime when Paul says something that we're not quite, you know, in agreement, we're like, hey, but that Paul has come again today. You know, brother Paul, our guy, when he was so, he was so full of zest, so full of zeal, and he was killing Christians. In his mind, that was his purpose. Like nobody could have told him differently. He was so determined, so, 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 you know, so excellent at it. <laughs> You know, he was he was doing it in his mind. Ah, this is what God brought me for. For these people that are disturbing the earth, I will wipe them all out. You know, and then one day, I'll not really be exactly. And then one day, God showed up and says, "Guy, guy, 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 this is not what I called you for." And immediately, he turned three sixty immediately, and he immediately started to do the work that God had proposed for him from the beginning of time. He was zealous for God. So immediately God just, when God arrested him, he turned 360. So many of us are doing many things today that if they ask us, we'll be saying, uh-uh, I have my purpose. Are you joking? I know what I'm here for. <laughs> but you may not really be working in the purpose that God has created you for. So how do you then find this purpose? How, how? Before we tell you how to find it, let's talk about why it is hard to find it. Many people find it hard. I mean, purpose should have been easy, right? You should just come on earth, bam, God, he created us for many, for everybody has one or two or three or four, whatever, but you have a purpose. So why didn't he just, as he was dropping us, send a, you know, a card along with the baby, say, okay, this baby is to help me, you know, find the cure for AIDS. This baby is to you know create a machine that flies you know how many miles per second this baby is to you know help people to learn how to know god better this baby is to sing and lead people's hearts to worship this baby you know you should just put the thing inside the thing put the manual with the baby right you know the way they put the cars and put the phones with the manual you should have just done that why 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 father are you giving us this drama in finding purpose some people live 40 years 50 years 60 years and they haven't found purpose why why is it so hard? I found out that part of the reasons why it's hard, number one, many of us are living from without, not from within, right? Many of us are living our lives not really, you know, we're not really, um, how do I put it? Many of us are not really living from the depths of us. We're living externally and there's a lot. There's a lot happening externally. So if you're living in the external, you'll be tossed here and there. You wake up today, foil price has risen. You wake up tomorrow. There's a dollar issue. You wake up the next day. There's, um, you know, they're breaking down one place somewhere. You wake up the next day and something else is happening in Gaza. And you're like, what is going on? You will just be tossing here and there because you're not living from within. You are being tossed by all the things that are happening with that. So that's the first thing. The second one is the overwhelming pursuit of success. Many of us believe that this purpose is to be maybe top person in our career. So if we are just going on, if we're, if we're, you know, we're, we're hitting our goals, if we're able to hit our goals, if we're able to, you know, hit our career goals, we're, we're fine. We're doing purpose, right? Many of us think that. And while you may be a fantastic person at work, that may not be your purpose. It could be. It could be, but it may not be your purpose, right? Now, another one is not stopping to self-reflect. Many people don't sit down and dialogue with themselves. Oh, thank you, sis. 
they never don't sit down and dialogue with themselves. They don't. They just um, they just go about life. You know, wake up in the morning, they're off on the road. They're bang, bang, bang. They're going about, and they and they are not stopping to engage with themselves. So they don't really know themselves. If they don't know themselves, how would they then know what they are supposed to be doing? Yeah. Remember, you didn't come into instruction manual. So how will you know? You have to know yourself. Yes, last week we talked about knowing yourself by knowing God. When you know God, you know yourself because you are made in the image and likeness of God. So yeah, knowing yourself. Then the next one is, some of us are not being conscious of our subconscious. <laughs> and in fact, I want to use rhymes today. Some of us are not being conscious of our subconscious. What do I mean? Our subconscious are, if you read my, my latest book, The Diary of a Former Lazy Girl, I talked about the subconscious there. They are the background apps running in our mind. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You find that many successful people, successful by the world standards, they get up and they just kill themselves. Now, why? When the guy is, is rich, he has a beautiful wife, he has cars, he, has, he travels everywhere, he does everything, he just gets up one day and kills himself. Why? He lacks purpose. In all of his success, he doesn't have purpose. Because purpose is that thing that keeps you living. There's, there's a way I put it. Um, yes, it's that thing that gives you direction in life and establishes meaning. Many people that are successful don't have meanings. And that's why they just wake up and die. So back to being conscious of our subconscious. Our subconscious are the background apps that run in our mind. They control 95% of what we do and see. So you have to actually pay attention to your subconscious you have to take those background apps the ones that are not serving you delete them and reinstall new ones because if you don't you will find that it's a never ending cycle of just doing what is not serving you so yes we need to you know work on our subconscious pay attention to our subconscious pay attention to what we're thinking by time be conscious of what you are conscious of yeah <laughs> and then comparing oh god many people die because they are constantly comparing their lives to others why would you do that if you sit down you know how i i said this in the last live that you cannot tell the time by somebody else's watch you are made differently even twins came to the world for two different purposes god did not tie two of you together never so you can't compare your life to another person. I mean, you can admire them, you can learn from them, you can take a cue or two from them, but you're not supposed to compare your life to them. Comparison gives you, it gives you heartache. It constantly makes you feel ungrateful. So instead of comparison, you look at people, be grateful for them, and be grateful for yourself. Because if not, you will find that you are constantly, constantly comparing and feeling short. There's a, there's a hymn we used to sing in church, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Counting your blessings is a very sure way of removing yourself from comparison. I used to, you know, those designs I used to have plenty of sense. <laughs> I used to go to, um, yes, it's a thief of joy, thank you. I used to go to maybe prize giving day, for example. See those children who are collecting all the prizes and I'm thinking, hey, God, when? Why is my own child not collecting? I mean, you know, and I now realize that life is more than that. I just want to raise happy, wholesome children and not necessarily award winners. I mean, where are the award winners that were in your school then? Where are they now? Where are they today? Do you remember? Are they, are they topping any, any charts? Not necessarily. Some may, but not all. So it's not, the, it's not the key to success. It is good. It's good to work hard. It's good to get prizes. But it's not the end of life. So why do you compare yourself with others for any reason? It's a thief of joy. Simply put. And another reason why it's hard to find purpose is a lack of clarity, lack of direction. Many people don't know where to even search. They're like, where do we even start from? They don't even know where to start from. So today, I'm going to help you with direction. It's, it's a short class, so we may not go very in-depth, but I'm going to give you a direction, right? Because that is the number one reason why it's hard 
many people if you ask them what is your purpose i don't know why don't you know they don't even know where to look they don't know where to start from so romans 8 20 it tells us that and we know that all things work together I, you can finish that one right many people, i used to finish that verse by saying all things work together for good to them that love god i not always remember to add and are called according to his purpose so today i'm reading that verse in full romans 8 28 all things work together